everybody, Marissa with Lingual Abilities here coming at you today with a new type of video. Instead of just doing things about telepractice, I've had some requests for people asking, how do I do this therapy technique? Um, so today we're going to go through how to pronounce the American R, uh, which is a difficult sound for sure. Uh, it's one of the more later developing sounds. And so when we have kids who are two, three, four, we definitely don't expect them to be making it. That's not to say that somebody might not pick up like a four or five year old to start working on R, especially if that's the, the last sound that they are having some trouble with. Um, but it's difficult because it's later developing and there's a couple factors that go into it. So I wanted to show you this anatomy printout of a head. So if you imagine it's kind of an x-ray of the inside of your head, I share this with my students all the time, starting from like age eight or nine up because it gives a really good idea of what's going on in the mouth and what we need to do with our tongue because it's hard to see in there, especially if you're working in telepractice. I can't put a tongue depressor back in there. I can't really see perfectly what's going on. I really have to listen for it. So it's important that my students and clients know the markers that I'm talking about. So if we look at this head, you know, here we come down, we've got the nose, we've got the lips to the chin. These white things are the teeth. This yellow part right here is the hard palate. And this little bump will be important to talk about later on. The lighter color back here is the soft palate or the velum. And this raises and lowers so that we can get air coming in and out of the nose. And then the big pink part is the tongue. So you can see how much it takes up inside the mouth. The teeth are obviously missing from this picture. They would come across like this if they were in the picture. And then we have the voice um, action to show that this is a voiced sound. So it being a palatal voiced liquid isn't really so important for uh, people looking to help their kids. If you're a speech pathologist, you already know what that means. Don't worry about that too much. Um, what is important to notice though, is that in this position, which is one of the ways you can make R, the tongue is backed. We call it a bunched or backed R because it's pulled back like that. And you'll also notice that there's no air coming through into the nose. So to get that, um, we tell kids that they need to pull their tongue backwards. And I make this kind of hand motion to show my tongue filling the back of my mouth. I say they will feel it on the sides of their teeth. The sides of their tongue will touch the sides of their back teeth. They'll pull it back. And I look for that tongue to be absent from the front because like I said, through telepractice, it's kind of hard to see what's going on in the mouth. I don't have my eyes right up here. So I look for the tongue to be pulled back as much as possible. And then I get them to say something like a pirate sound or a bear sound. I say, try and go, Arr. and we might get something that's a pretty close approximation because just pulling back like that is different from what they were most likely doing to begin with. The key to the bunched position or the, the backed position is that we have our lips engaged as well. And that's difficult to see here that this would be happening because it's just a side picture. But if you just get the backing of the tongue and you don't get the lips involved, sometimes you get a little like RW hybrid. And so that sounds like our lips are going to be rounded, tongue is back, Urgh. You can see how it still kind of sounds W-ish, rabbit. It's like they kind of combined into one weird sound. And that's not what we want. So if we get the tongue pulled back, we get the lips pulled back, rabbit then we get what we want. So if kids are getting the backing position, which honestly I've had really good luck with, um, but not getting the lips, sometimes I'll have them put their fingers here so they can feel, oh, it went back. Okay, that's what I wanna do. And then they really start to hear the difference between rabbit and rabbit, okay? So that's the bunched position. What makes R so difficult though, is that that's not the only way that you can say it. Another way that you can say it is the retroflex position. So this mouth is not doing that, but what it would look like if it did is kind of a wave. This is where that bump that I mentioned comes into play. This is the alveolar ridge. And if you feel right behind your teeth, either with your finger or your tongue, hopefully your finger is clean, you can feel this little ridge that just kind of goes whoop right behind your teeth. So I'll have my students or my clients start with that little whoop that little hill to make sure they know where to put their tongue. 
because the next step is to take your tongue instead of pulling it backwards, you're going to flip it. So I use this hand gesture. We're flipping our tongue. You can see this one a little bit better because it's further forward in the mouth. So you'll see the lips want to pull back a little bit still. The tongue will actually flip right behind the teeth. And then we get err. Now I do kind of a combination, which is the third way to do it. So it's hard for me to do just the retroflex by itself. I'm gonna wanna pull back a little bit too. But if you if the bunching position isn't working, try that retroflex. That might be the best way to do it. Um, so the flipping tongue is how I get that retroflex or the, we call it the flippy R sometimes too, if retroflex is too big of a word. Err, like that. Rabbit. And it really sounds nice and rich and robust. Ear. I can feel my tongue flip back when I do that. Air. Like that. Um, if you are wanting to get a little more kick in your bunch, sometimes though the combination is what works best. So I'll notice kids are getting that bunch and it just doesn't sound quite where I want it. They've got their lips pulled back nicely. And what I find is that if they are pulling back the back of their tongue, but then also simultaneously, if my fingers could flip upside down, they're flipping the front of their tongue, we get kind of a combination and it really kicks it into gear for these kids who are super close, but not quite there. That's actually what I do with mine. It's mostly back, but there's a little bit of retroflexion, uh, especially as I'm ending words. So for that one, if you can't get the kid to do it with just a bunched R, the, the backed R, try and add both and see if that will kind of kick it into gear. So you can hear it in mine, rabbit, arrow, fire, error. So I, I keep that position more or less the same regardless of what's going on with my vowels. Having said that, it is going to change as you do different vowels. So you're most likely going to have to teach that R in the beginning position like rabbit, in the middle position like arrow, and then in the final position with all the different vowels that can color the R. So you're gonna have E-R, er, A-R, R, uh, um, O-R, or, which is a tough one because we have to round when we say O oh, and then pull it back real fast for the R, or. There's also all the diphthongs like air, or, um, you know, you can, you can find these lists of all the different sounds, but be sure to teach each individual one so that you're not just doing er, and then they end up having a problem with or, let's say. So those are my three tactics for teaching R. We have the bunched or backed position, the retroflex or flippy position, and then we have the combination where we have to add a little bit more kick to our retroflex and get a little more, or add a little more kick to our bunch by adding the retroflex. So again, I hope that you found this helpful. This was how to produce the American R with three different positions that might work for your client. You know, everybody's a little bit different and finding the right position for somebody is gonna be different than a different client. If you like this type of video, please let me know, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to us so that we have uh, that following base and we know that you're watching. You can also find us on Instagram, uh, Facebook and Twitter using the moniker Linguabilities, L-I-N-G-U Abilities. And finally, if you're interested in, in any of the telepractice products that I use on a daily basis, there will be a list of those in the comments below. So check that out. Can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye.